is Heidi Dahoudi. I was born in Iran, but since more than 25 years, I'm living here in beautiful Amsterdam. Um, I am a philosopher, a feminist, and I'm also a, a board member of the foundation called Stop Ecocide. As a feminist, I, I am particularly fighting for the rights of Muslim women, but it's not only Muslim women. It's basically something that is called intersectional feminism and the the view behind intersectional feminism is that there's a hierarchy that some people uh, have and fall in um, being discriminated. For example, uh, a Muslim woman is being more discriminated than a, a, a white um, non-religious woman or a black woman uh, who is poor and maybe even on top of that, transgender, is being discriminated by the society that we live on that is dominated by still white heterosexual men. So as part of my intersectional feminism, um, I am defending a lot right now Muslim women and something that is called Islamic feminism because it's very unknown to the Western world. What, it, what they do basically is they say, okay, the reality is we are living in, a, in, in, in Muslim countries and uh, in, in Iran, uh, the Sharia, the, 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 the Islamic law is uh, really pervaded into everyday life. So uh, they say this is something we cannot change, not, not easily. So what they have started to do is to go back to the basic uh, writings of the Islam, which is the Quran, and they historize it. That means they started to say, okay, this was really only in that time and context in the history that it was valid. It's not valid anymore because life and world is dynamic, it changes. And on this, the second thing that they do, they go and search really explicitly in the Quran where there is something, some talk about the role of women. And they start to find out that it's quite inclusive for women. It's not exclusive. So they start to find new interpretations in, in the Quran and are sub substituting those interpretations with the traditional, mostly patriarchal, interpretations and it's um it's very the the arguments that they have are very strong i mean in pakistan they have managed to change some laws family laws based on these new interpretations of the quran in iran women uh, uh really islamic scholars who are women um they have been able to prove that the Islam says that women can also be a candidate for a political, for, for, for prime minister, for example. And every year, every time there are elections, for example, in Iran, there are 200 and sometimes 150, but there, there's quite an amount of women who, who put themselves into the lists as candidates. They never, never get voted though, but still they do it. They fight like this. It's a soft fight by using the Islam as their means of uh, argumentation, basically. The other side of my activism is uh, that I am really working closely together since uh, I'm, I'm part of the board of, of the foundation, which is called Stop Ecocide. And, uh, this foundation is, um, is, is really helping uh, a Scottish lawyer, her name is Polly Higgins, who calls herself the lawyer of the earth, and who tries to uh, make ecocides, the mass damage and destruction of ecosystems in the world, a fifth crime against peace in the Statute of Rome. 
So we are the foundation, the organization from Holland who are supporting her and we are supporting all her efforts to make ecocide a fifth crime against peace. And why? Because it has everything to do with human rights as well. Mm -hmm. um, you, it's a human right to, to have clean air. It's a human right to have clean water. It's a human right to have a protected environment that you can live in and, 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 and lead your life. And it also has a lot to do with my feminism because, uh, again, women in the world who suffer and who will suffer the most on, on the effects of climate change. Uh, well, if you look, for example, in the in the third, we call them third world country. I hate that name, third world. Uh, but in the in the poorer countries of 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 this world, uh, women are the poorest. So when there is a lack of water or a lack of food, women and the children they have to nurture are the first to suffer from that, because lots of women are also not the, 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 the human beings who can get jobs when there are just two little jobs for everyone, for example. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and when there is war and conflicts going on, one of the still biggest weapons of war is rape. So if there is a conflict, and there will be conflict, and there's always conflict when food and things get scarce, um, then women suffer the most because in those conflicts they, 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 they are the first to be victims of hunger and rape. So it is, it is an, a, a women's issue as well. You know, I was I was 16 when I had to flee myself because of um, the situation in Iran at that time. And I was a 16-year-old girl coming to Europe. Um, I was not welcomed at all. And um, during my life, uh, I, I have had perspectives on human rights and stuff, but never really on a fundamental, deeper knowing level. And uh, about six years ago, I decided to study philosophy at the University of Amsterdam, which I did. And I have um, majored my master's um, thesis on Hannah Arendt. Hannah Arendt was a philosopher of the last century. And I have read everything that she has written. And she is my, my yeah, role model. And she has written a lot about human rights, for example. And by going into the deeper knowledge that I could read within her thinking, I found out really how complex and difficult something like international inalienable human rights is. So that basically, to answer your question, motivated me to continue on that path and to really become political because that was also something she advocated for. If we shape the world, all of us, every day, by our deeds and talks in the public sphere. And that's when I decided to go out there in the public sphere as well, because I want to have a say in how the world is being shaped. Yeah, well, I think grassroots is the only thing that is really capable of changing things, but you need mass. You need a lot of people. Power only starts to, power is not something that individuals own, power is only something that lots of people or groups of people own. This is also something that Hannah Arendt has, has taught me, and she's right. Um, uh, it, is, it must come from the grassroots because it's affecting everyday life of every individual human being. So as long as we are living in a neoliberal capitalistic world, it will be difficult uh, to, to only put these decisions in the hands of politicians themselves. I do think that as, as soon as there are enough people going to the streets, telling the politicians, we mandate you to change this, then politicians will follow. But as long as we have an economic system that is based on 
the infinite growth, it will be difficult. So I basically think the system needs to change. And I do think the system is already changing by itself because infinite growth is just not possible.